What's going on, guys? It is the last Tuesday of the month. So you know what that means. It's 7 p.m. My name's Carson. It is time for the Tuesday Night Live stream, number 39. So basically on these now, I'm just recapping what I read for the month of June, showing you what I picked up, but I'm trying something a little different this time. So you guys are a member of the Comic Core chat on the, the Facebook Messenger gimmick or the uh, the slab down chat that's just it's insane uh most of the people on instagram that are you know in the tony sanders inner circle kind of know what that is um i put the hangout link in those two chats so we'll see what happens i'm calling it the wild card rule if you guys watch raw and smackdown right now you know what that is or isn't so yeah it's probably going to be more fun than watching Raw or SmackDown, maybe. So <laughs> we'll see. But nonetheless, we've already got a lively chat popping in here. So I definitely want to pay my respects to what's going on over there. So we got uh, 90 MF Comics. Chad, YouTube is 90 drinking in, man. Love that guy. Definitely check him out Thursdays on uh, Turtle Talk Thursday. Our uh, reviews in a half shell, both great names. So uh, hopefully I can actually join him this week because I have Thursday off. So uh, we'll have to get with him and see what we're going to talk about this Thursday. But I'm always excited for uh, Turtle Talk Thursday. Next up, he just had his premiere uh, for uh, What's On the Day of Discovery Bay. And that's JB from Discovery Bay Comics. What's going on, man? Uh, still doing some of the best work in the whole uh comic book youtube community we got going on here and we got thomas wayne what's going on thomas seeing him in a lot of chats lately and we got tmc comics what's going on tmc and then we got live from the uh, cheese factory kicking it like that fat right we got caleb comic smurf murphy all right so thank you guys for hopping in and saying hi uh it's so like i said i'm gonna run this a little bit different um you guys most know you know what these books look like at this point. You've been seeing them all month. Um, so I was going to talk a little bit about organization tonight. So in the month of June, I had a few days off of work. And these boxes behind me and in that closet, they're all finally full. So up here, I'll give some people some motion sickness real quick. Up here is my staging area. And you see it's almost completely empty. So that means those overflowing books that have been there for like eight months, they're finally sorted. So we're going to talk about comic book sorting tonight to see what happens with that, see if you guys like that, and uh, get my thoughts on that. So me like an idiot, uh, instead of holding up my June book so I could be like, oh, blah, 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 I love this book, this was great, I sorted most of my books I was going to show tonight right before the show. So uh, we're just going to go down the list real quick, and I'm going to talk about some of these books. And uh, luckily, I left a few of them out to highlight and show you guys. So uh, let me know what you guys think of these reads. But uh, I'll hop into my first one, so especially since we got Chad 90 in here. Uh, I got to start with my two TMNT books, uh, TMNT 94 and Batman TMNT Issue 2. We covered those on uh, Reviews in a Half Shell, a.k.a. Uh, Turtle Talk Thursdays on a previous installment of that. Definitely click on uh, 90MF Comics for that link. And uh, check out that show. But uh, once again, uh, Turtles has been on a roll for me since Chad got me back into those books. Um, uh, basically, they've started the uh, City at War storyline. And uh, Raph and Splinter, they're both getting dirty in each of their ways. So Splinter is going after Mafia guys that are disrespecting him and the Foot Clan that he's under. Uh, meanwhile, Raphael, they're going after uh, with uh, the cat old Hob. If you guys have read it since the beginning, you might know who that character is. Uh, him and Old Hob are attacking a mutant slavery factory, basically, where they make mutants and control them. And Old Hob decides that, you know, they can use that to their advantage. And Raphael uh, ends the issue by saying, I want in. So we'll see what happens in the next issue. They're building up towards something very big for issue yeah, yeah. number 100. Oh, no. We gotta get the wild card rule fully in effect. <laughs> What's going on, man? YouTube is ninety. Had to come and remind everyone, even though you did a great job reminding <laughs> everyone in the chat yourself, Carson. I appreciate that. 
But what's going on, man? Other Not much. Day, man. Just happy to be in the old Tuesday night live stream mode again. Happy to see you on the chat. How you been, man? I know this, the 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 the, the tone and the, those jabronis, you know, over there. You know, they, they've been coming at you hard. How you been? How you been coping with oh, all this slab down? I, well, I know I'm a conspiracy victim. We all know I was conspired against in my hunt championship. I'm mm -hmm. still the undisputed cover championship, which I could show you right here if you guys forgot. Cover championships right here. Oh, I love and that book. Enough the said right there. The cover championship will be up for grabs, I believe, on the next hunt. So make sure you guys tune in because Y290, I've already rested up from the last rumble that I had to go through with the whaler and all that stuff and you know he i don't know how he won with that bones but we'll we'll figure out how i was conspired against i'll let the 90 holics know how that happened once i get my hunt championship back but we're gonna best believe defend this the rules have been set i don't know if i can i guess i can say what it is but we're going homage covers so you want to tune in next week on the hunt as me in the tone Throw down for the cover championship, but it's going to be homage covers as the theme. So you want to make sure you're there, Tony Sanders. Nice. So yeah. in in this, you know, the slab down chat, you know, we got going on there. Which, by the way, I guess insane. you know, insane we'll, that thing. We'll shoot real quick. If you guys haven't checked out Tony Sanders' channel and the show, the hunt that's uh, live Friday nights, every other Friday night, it is like one of the most funny shows you could ever watch if you're a fan of pro wrestling and comic books this is the perfect show for you so absolutely check it out but back in the kayfabe here those jabronis man and did you I, know why that show is the greatest show on youtube it's because of y290 yeah, yeah, i mean you really you're I mean, welcome, introducing that you're welcome. The everyone that watches tony sanders show you're welcome tony the tone mr mcsands you're welcome because i made the hunt what it is, Mr. Comics in the Bank cashing in, and I'm waiting for my thank you from everyone still. So, okay, <laughs> I'm waiting for it. You guys know where to find me 90MF Comics. Give me my thank you. No. All right, now, oh man, all I know is you know, I, th there's a tournament being formed for the inaugural slab down, which will be on, a, on Sundays, I believe. And you know, so I, yeah, I sometimes, you know, being the voice of the voiceless, you know, CW Punk, I just sit back and let the people do the talking for me because I, I can do that. So you know, people are like, man, why don't you throw that C Wood in the tournament if you need a number sixteen? And the responses were, oh, he's got that YT title. So now it's clear, like, why did Tony Sanders just give me this title? I haven't even introduced anyone yet. All I know is. McSand, he don't want none. They don't want none. They're keeping me out of this tournament. They're keeping me out of the hunt. And even today, there was another incident. And I know you you were one of the people in that chat. You're like, man, why don't they give that guy Seawood that comics in the bank? That'd make for some good, you know, YouTube action right there. And I immediately I saw, you know, one of these Hall of Famers uh, or, you know, Future Hold on, Code Hall of Famers. You know, the heartbreak Hold kid. He's just like, man, sometimes it doesn't matter what the chat says. They got to, you know, what books. It depends on the chat. All I know is the chat's begging for CW Punk. So all I know is I think this is breaking. Tony Sanders, I believe, says I'm going to be on the hunt. So they don't want me coming from left field. And I respect that. They finally smartened up and listened to the people. And they're like, you know, we this guy can't come in with comics in the bank because we'll get just destroyed. We need to see him coming. So finally, finally, after all this time, the people, their voices have been heard coming to the hunt. So official? do this I have like everybody's attention now? This is there real? You. Yeah. Slap down okay. chat. I don't right. know. He might. He might back out. You never know. Because uh, those guys on the hunt, they don't want none. I have to keep using the, the, you know, the community hashtags and everything to get their attention, and you know, it's spreading like wildfire. So, we'll see. We may be uh, friends now, but we might have to be uh, enemies later. So we'll see. All I know is, C Wood. Uh, well, I've been told 
that I'm not allowed. Oh, oh speaking I, of someone who's uh, you know outspoken and uh, you know voices going her, we got Drew Manchu and the C Wood. What's he, going he, on, Drew? You, he's you, probably been you, your you, advocate from day one. Oh, this sure. I, I tell he you wasn't what, even in the right chat now, I said something. Yeah, he. I wasn't even in the chat. I'm not even on the board. You know why? Because they're scared. They're all scared because I shoot from the hip. I'm a shooter. No kayfabe here. I'm not going to steal some 80 year old's gimmick and bring it to the stage. Oh man, let's run. Let's run the damn it down here. Mick Sands. Mick, ain't nobody scared of you, Mick Sands. Mick Sands, you lost your damn mind. You got no creative control anymore. Everybody's running wild on you. You can't even pay the damn bills. Everybody see them stomping ground numbers? Ain't nobody see that shit. And nobody's watching the hunt either. And you know why? It's because McSands is out of touch. You want to talk about JD Flair and his Rolexes? Oh. Come on, man. Rolexes. Wow. What are you compensating for, son? What are you compensating for? Hey, everybody's got to have shiny things, shiny rings. Guess what? I'm here. Two fists ready to fight. Let's go ahead and put these books up. You want to see what I got? I'm going to bring it to the table. Underwhaler, dead man. Good. Thank you. Save me a step. I'll have to kill you now. Everybody who's seen karaoke knows that Drew Manchu is going to kill you. That's about all there is to it. I've got no patience left for this rinky dink carny bullshit. Come to me, bring the fight. I'm going to be here waiting to take your lunch. I'm Damn. sorry. <laughs> I think it's absolutely said, yo. Drew Manchu, he's making his statement. I like it. Yeah. Come absolutely. to take your lunch. But man, yeah, I put Tony Sanders' link in the chat. If you guys want to see just what the hell are we talking about, if you just follow my channel, which is probably not too many of those people anyway, definitely check out Tony Sanders. So you can see like what the hunt show is all about. Cause it's like, you know, besides Comic Core, you got Comic Core on Friday nights and then followed up by the hunt. So two phenomenal live shows right there. Uh, but yeah, just thanks for joining me, guys. What Drew, what's been new with you lately? Oh man, besides getting pissed off at Fruity Monarchs and the Bandito Smurfs, <laughs> uh, you know, I I've just been like buying some books and and chilling out and, and enjoying some myself. And you know, uh, I got I got some new books I can't show you yet because I'm not supposed to have them until tomorrow. So, Ooh. banging and boarding right now. Nice. Uh, so nice. I'll flash one up right here. Diamond's going to come get me. Yeah. It's that new X-Men Grand Design. Ah, it'll come after me. It'll be all right. But anyway, Drew, I was going after the, the, the original segment for the show. Is usually I go after the, the books I read for the month of June. And one of these books you actually recommended to me. I'm very glad you did. And that's Spider-Man Life Story. So would you like to quickly talk about the, the Spider-Man Life Story comic? Because it is absolutely awesome. Life Story is great because it's the Bagley art you need in a Spider-Man story. And uh, and the the story itself is basically just a a timeless tale. Well, timeless. Time is actually a factor in this tale. Uh, Spider-Man grows old throughout the decades. So it starts with him and his beginnings in the 60s. Uh, goes through the clone saga in the 70s uh, that all comes full circle again in the 90s so there's a there's a lot of stuff in there that uh old spider-man heads will appreciate and new spider-man heads will uh definitely get a uh, a taste of history while reading through it i really enjoyed it yeah i was gonna say if you guys in the chat haven't read just imagine like you know a book like you're just like, man, what would Spider-Man be like if his continuity actually started in the 60s and he, a he aged through the years as well as the characters in the universe? And that's what Spider-Man life story is. So you get to see him start off as like, you know, this little pipsqueak kid in the 60s. And now he's an older man that has a clone saga going on in the 90s. So I'm really curious to see what in the world they're going to do in the 2000s one that's coming up next. And it's been I think that it, it was really poetic the way they uh, did the end of the Green Goblin. Um, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but uh, uh, it's, it's a really, really nice end for the character. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, not from his point of view, but as far as story wise, I really like what they did with it. Nice. Chad, have you had a chance to read that one yet? 
No, I ha- have not. I have it on the list, though. So it's one nice. of the ones that I'm about to get to. I don't have it physically, but I own it digitally. So once I get awesome. around to reading it. It's uh, it's pretty dense and, and wordy for a Spider-Man book, but it, it, it you fly right through them. Yeah. Uh, at I least agree. I did. I, I found it to be a really quick read. Mm-hmm. Oh, sweet. No, I look forward to reading it because I hear nothing but great things about it. And that's why I was like, oh, you know what? I get it's probably too late to find those early issues. So I'm like, whatever, I'll just read it digitally. So it's one of the things, like I said, I have it queued up next to read in my digital lineup. It's one that I haven't found to be that hard to find, to be honest. Uh, yes. Yeah, I missed, I missed the first two. I read number two digitally, like pirated. I didn't pay for it, but I was like, hmm, somebody recommended it. I read through it and I was like, okay, I got to have both one and two of this. So went back and invested my actual hard earned dollars on it. So there's a question in the chat for Chad. So this comes from Mr. Gretzky, 9966. What's going on? He says, I was looking at Chad. Have you read the TMNT and Ghostbusters series? We're kind of just talking about that before you hopped in. So what are your thoughts on the uh, the TMNT stuff, just in case someone hasn't seen or I, viewed from the half shell? Uh, TMNT Ghostbusters is actually really good. I highly recommend it. That was a nice little fun read. Uh, it's just one of those things like you would think too weird – teams that wouldn't work together but they seem to make it work so i did read it mr grezzi i would recommend it and i don't know what we're reading this or reviewing this week on review and a half show or team and t yet i know we had caleb on last week me and him we talked a little bit about the movie right. if we have everyone everyone on maybe we can talk a little bit about the movie and then we can you know possibly just speculate on what's going to happen in the team and t universe or maybe reminisce yeah. on that we love about TMNT yeah. and set up the next. I do want to read or reread the Batman TMNT Adventures, mm. which is kind of what the, you know, I guess it's, you know, animated series Batman with like the Nickelodeon TMNT, like the current ones, but yeah. it was a, it was a fun read and I highly recommend it. You know, I was going to pitch an idea by you. We could maybe try to do that at some point. I think I wouldn't mind rewatching maybe the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, and we just do a retro review of that movie. All oh, right, we could do that. I think that's something you know. Maybe we could see if everybody likes. But before you know, I'm gonna turtles in time. Movie. Make it turtles in time, and I'm down. Turtles three or the turtles video game turtles in time. Either. Oh. <laughs> I was, oh. uh, yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind getting Drew on a review of the Turtles Three. I have some thoughts on that movie. So it's a I, fun I, flick, man. I got I I have nothing but positive memories of that movie. Mm, and then every time I, I rewatch it, I'm like, why did you. I why did I like that? <laughs> yeah, I th- I think we absolutely need to do that at some point. But before we keep talking about the books, I want to get back into this chat uh, because uh, since you guys hopped in, which thanks for being here, guys. This is awesome. Uh, we've had quite the lively chat come in here. We got Count Von Strange the Fourth. What is going on, man? This guy's been putting out some great videos lately, so check him out. We got, oh man, we got the Slab Dragon TJ Watson in the chat. What's going on, TJ? Always glad to see TJ out in the chats. Uh, we got, hey, Drew, we got the Blast Interstash Comic Show. I think you know those guys, right? QE, what's up, buddy? We still got Thomas Wayne. Uh, we got Bear Island Comics in the chat so definitely check out his channel he's running a contest right now uh so definitely check out his contest there's been some awesome entries uh whitewell comics did a hilarious awesome entry today for it so check that out as well uh, i laughed my sides off on that one uh we just I actually posted the a video on my channel for that nah, oh that's do right that. drew you have one out too uh, we also have, anymore. you know, we, we talk turtles and who that comics movies sneaks in the chat. So what's going on? Who that? Uh, we got JP's budget collecting. I got to know him a couple weeks ago on the comic Court show. So it was nice talking to him. So what's going on? JP. Let's see who else we got going on here. We still got the comic smurf Caleb in the chat. And, uh, hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Oh, the comic collector hopped in earlier. What's going on? Comic collector. They're talking about conspiracy victims and that stuff. Yeah, well, I think everyone here is a conspiracy victim if we're talking about that those slab down guys. But nonetheless, um, I just maybe I want to get some picks of the month for you guys. Maybe like one or two or three books you guys want to talk about. Uh, but before that, I did want to show off one of my top picks for June, and that's Drawing Blood number two. We were talking about Kevin Eastman earlier with Turtles. Kevin Eastman's actually doing pretty good work on Drawing Blood as well. So have you guys had a chance to check this out? No, I have not checked that out. 
Oh, no, man. I'm not a huge Eastman fan outside of his work on Turtles. Sure. Yeah, I mean, usually, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't checked out much of his non-Turtles work, uh, but this book has actually been really cool so far. I, I mean, issue one was fine. It didn't quite hook me, but then I saw this it, cover for issue two with the uh, you know Metropolis tribute cover from Eastman, I guess, and I thought that was an awesome looking cover. So I, I just went, sat down and read the issue, and it's actually, I think it was a vast improvement from issue one. So basically, you know, it's about a, a comic creator, uh, similar to Kevin Eastman, probably. And he has a mentor uh, who passed away recently. And this mentor of his, they work pretty closely together. Uh, so when he dies, uh, the guy, the main character in Drawing Blood, inherits all this mafia debt, basically. And uh, I think I showed this on one of the Comic Core shows last week. So I'll show the panel again. So the issue one cut off with them being held up by these uh, mafia goons, basically. And a, he gets saved by a, a reporter filming this whole instance. And uh, I think this reporter looks kind of familiar there. So I thought that was a pretty funny tribute to April O'Neil, I guess. So I thought that was a cool book. And then uh, I talked a little bit about Militia the other day as well on the uh, core channels. New Chuck Dixon independent title. Uh, nothing too crazy, but I still I really enjoyed this uh, book. Uh, you got like... I think it was a school of 20 uh, little school children get kidnapped uh, by some terrorists. And it's up to this uh, character who's a uh, basically a computer scientist for the military. Uh, she's going to go in the field for the first time and help get some of these school children rescued. They rescue most of them, but they're still missing eight of them. So that's where that left off. And then, uh, Drew, you recommended I get deceased issue two because it was a vast improvement from issue one. Kind of like drawing blood. And I'm glad I did. Uh, this is one of my, I mean, this is one of the most fun reads out there now, in my opinion. I know we criticized the art in issue one. A lot of people didn't like the flow of the story. Uh, but if you guys like, you know, your Elseworlds style DC or Marvel Zombies from the mid 2000s, uh, this is an absolute, you know, follow up to those ty that type of storytelling. So I think some people tried to kind of shoehorn this in DC continuity. Absolutely not. This is just. A nice zombie Elseworld style tell from DC, and it's a lot of fun. And the covers, the uh, B and C covers, have been really cool for it. So, what about you? It's, guys? That, what, it's that? that DC event that's actually working. <laughs> so, well, I think we're gonna have to make a comic cord out of deceased once it uh, fully releases. So, I think uh, people are gonna remember it fondly, the same way they do Injustice. I think. Uh, yeah. The fact that it doesn't have a video game attached to it makes it a little bit easier for some people to wrap their head around. It may be a little bit harder for some others to wrap their head around, but I think Deceased is the uh, uh, same writer as Injustice, so it's got that uh, it's got a really uh, great Injustice flavor to it. Yeah, um, just dumb fun schlock, just great comic book schlock. Um, uh, you know, when when people take uh, stories like Heroes in Crisis and go, "Oh, it's good because it's fun and it had this," and there was a pretty Harley Quinn in it. That that yeah, that's bad <laughs> schlock. Uh, this is good schlock. This is like uh, this is like uh, kung fu movies on a Saturday afternoon schlock. It's it's good stuff. Uh, the art is a bit spotty. It isn't what I want out of it, but all the splash pages work. Everything makes sense within its own continuity, uh, and it's you know it's it's a fun way to make me care about Dark Side and and Cyborg and and then have them fuck off and have a, a wonderful zombie story basically to play with. Yeah, in between there, that's been really good, man. Um, beyond that, uh, man, June has been uh, feast and famine mm -hmm. for for comic books. Where I, for as far as I'm concerned, um, it, Marvel's got the War of the Realms going on right now. So if you like big events, you're you're in for a treat there. If you don't like big events, then boo hoo, sorry for you. Um, you can go with a small event and read Age of X Men. I think I'm the only person doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, Spider Man life story has been great. Really loving that. Uh, Tomasi on Detective Comics. His first run was amazing. So we're gonna see what he does with the Specter stuff that's coming up. Um, man, what else has been really good? Mm, Punisher has continued to be really good. Uh, there's just so many books out there that I can start to forget what came out in June. I'm going to start talking about things that came out in April. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Heroes in Crisis finished, and Thank that God. was the most entertainment I've got out <laughs> of a book 
in a long time, just uh, <laughs> running my mouth about it after the fact. So we got your pal. I'll, I'll give it some props on that. In the chat, by the way, saying "Heroes in Crisis" is deep. You don't get it. So we all know comics <laughs> misexplains opinions. And, uh, check out the uh, oh. inaugural episode of Comic Court on the Comic Court channel to see what Drew and Comics misexplain think of Heroes in Crisis. I mean, the prosecution was, yeah, it sucks. We all know it does. And the defense was, well, let's make an argument about something else. Yeah. Good job, John. <sighs> you know what? You know what? I think the best part about the Comic Court is, and I'm going to shoot on, I'm sure that, shoot on this right now. Is I, I really love that speech that John wrote for Alec. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> no. I mean, we can't forget to talk about Silver Surfer. Seemed rehearsed. Black. Just saying. Seemed rehearsed. Silver well, Surfer Black was pretty good too. Well, I and I well, I was actually going to talk about that on my little segment. I was going to talk about that last. Nice, go ahead. Uh, all right. Well, one of my favorite pick cover pickups from last week was this Eastman. Ah, I need that cover. One. So I had to like show that off as we were just talking Eastman earlier. Don't worry. See where mine will end up on an auction at some point. Sweet. Yeah. Some of my favorite reads from last week. Uh, it's definitely going to be my indie read of last week was honor and curse issue. Number five, mad cave studios. Definitely check this out. If you haven't Shinobi's, at war it goes down in this there's deaths all over the place it's super cool i definitely would tell you to check this out if you haven't i really enjoy this the art is so so good in this book so check it out mad cave studios and as we all know donny cates has been killing everything gardens of the galaxy i thought this was great as well i know a lot of people were a little salty about issue five but i think he did a good job with kind of like poking fun at us and kind of teasing us and wrapping it right, you know, bringing it around and did what we all, I guess, wanted or expected in that sense. So good stuff by John, Donnie Cates. And speaking of Donnie Cates, my other thing, and you guys see behind me, I have Silver Surfer Black. I've been specking hard on it because I did pick up the digital copy and it was the direct edition. And there's actually some notes from Donnie Cates to Chad Moore and he speaks about one panel, and I'm gonna go ahead and screen share my. They did a digital director's cut. Yeah, man, it, it, on the first Damn. one that came out, and that's kind of weird. And a lot of times, you know, they show different stuff, or you know, and show notes from the writers and the artists and stuff like that. So uh, these are the notes here, and I'm sure you can barely, you know, see them. But I, I guess I'll just read it. it. Right here, it says panel three, largest panel on the page. He goes, he looks up and he's speaking about Surfer. He looks up to the gates. He goes, Chad, these are those gates we wanted, buddy. So go to town. In my mind, they are huge, towering black metal behemoths. So tall, they break through the black cloud cover so we can't tell where they end, if they ever do. This is the entrance to Knoll's kingdom. So they have dragons and tapestries of his conquest teeth and celestials and swords we are behind the surfer here he's on his knees looking up at the towering gates three horrific sentries standing guard in front trad i know you have a specific design for these guys but just do not make them look like venom or have any other symbiote like traits they can have the big teeth like noel has but make them look like they have they are made more of uh, stone here. We want to hide the symbiote of it all for the time being. So with that being said, this is that panel he's talking about. So this right here is the first appearance of Noel's Kingdom. And I am going to tell people right now, you want to go get that because Donny Cates just clearly stated that in his notes to Chad Moore. And uh, these this three guys down here are probably the first appearance of some sort of symbiotes we'll probably see in absolute carnage. So... Something I've been kind of just putting out to the community to make sure you go get your Silver Surfer Blacks number ones now because when Absolute Carnage goes down, Donny Cates is really good at bringing things back around. And I'm sure this right here will mean something and it will probably blow up and everyone will be looking for it. So it's kind of like my little spec on that on Silver Surfer Black. And then... <clears throat> I also believe the same thing with Carnage Born when Carnage fused or, you know, he takes the Null Codex and fuses with it. So this is going to be that first appearance of Null and Carnage. So I think when Absolute Carnage goes down, people are going to be wanting this book 
once they realize what's happening. So take it for what it is. That's my spec. I've been talking about it on my channel. If you guys haven't checked me out, 90MF Comics. YouTube is 90. <laughs> awesome. That's yeah, cool. Man. I think it's absolutely awesome that we can be specking on a book based on story for once and yeah. not about, you know, uh, some TV channel that's never going to make the show optioned it and, you know, now we're all we're all waiting for uh, Bone Parish to be a movie or something, you know, some yeah. stupid shit like that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, one thing I was going to talk about tonight, if it was just me, was the uh, the why the last man showrunner situation. So apparently, eight days ago, they finally got the replacement showrunner. So they, they it's been a mess already. So what do you guys think about this? Why the last man TV show trying to you know get off its feet and. It hasn't even happened yet, and we're already switching around the showrunners. I mean, it's got potential. It's a great property, mm -hmm. um, but it, it it all comes down to what's the budget going to look like? How's it going to end up being? And you know, and there's a lot more to the business of TV than whether or not the show is is a good story. Um, the Swamp Thing's already canceled because yeah. they could they couldn't figure out how to get the budget under control. That show's great. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Jones. We're not getting a season four, um, but I can say to you right now, I spent most of last night watching it. Jessica Jones season three is it, like next to Daredevil season two. It's it's the best of the Netflix Marvel stuff. It's really, really great TV, really well written, um, really great characters and uh, just exciting stuff. But that's never, you know, it's, we're not going to get any more of that. So. I hope that we it gets off the ground. Was did, didn't Deadly Cas Class get canceled already? I didn't hear I that. Know. I haven't had a chance to even watch that show yet. Exactly. So we we didn't we didn't get a chance to even really get going, and that and I think that that's done. So, uh, you know, I hope that they don't fall flat on their face with why because it's a great story. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like we live in the world created by uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Where right. Hollywood just buys every single property to the point like I can't even keep track. I used to watch like every single comic book really a TV show there was because you you could keep up. Now it's just it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, it's so Bake true. the snake in the chat said uh, that he'll give it a try because Jessica Jones season two threw him off. No, dude, yeah, uh, trust me, Jessica Jones season two sucked. Uh, season three is great. What were you gonna say, Chad? Oh, no, well, I guess not to really backtrack, but Drew, I would love to see more specking on actual stuff in comics. Oh, yeah. and, and right? It's oh. well, Donnie Cates is that guy who, who pays attention to continuity because he's one of us, one yeah. of us, you know? Yeah. He still collects books, you know, because he's like, oh, this is a sweet issue. Oh, I read this. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this now, this run of this. And you know it informs his stuff because he throws that continuity in there, man. You know he read all of Aaron's Thor and was like, I'll do something with this thing, this Necrosword. So it, 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 you, you know he's one of the guys that he's he's in it with us. Yeah, and so, that's why I'm he knows how to stir on the his pot. stuff. You know? So... Yeah, it reminds me kind of, you know, Jonathan Hickman building the Secret Wars. Like, he was planting seeds for that, like, years before they actually got there. And it's just that long-term storytelling and, you know, introducing these characters at the right time. And, you know, something out of left field, then it comes, you know, into the full camera. So I, I love that type of storytelling. So <laughs> I'm really curious to see, you know, I wonder if, you know, all the carnage and symbiote stuff, eventually, if that's going to intersect even more with you know the stuff going on in Silver Surfer Black, like you said, with all the stuff going on with Noel and then wrap in Guardians of the Galaxy and that stuff. So uh, absolutely they can easily wrap awesome. in Guardians because they wrapped yes. in the planet of the symbiotes into into his Venom run as well. He, yeah, I, that's one of the, the better things Bendis did that they immediately undid, but at least they found a real nice way inside of continuity to undo it. Yeah, but even in Silver Surfer Black One, he found a way to tie in Guardians. Cause in oh Guardians, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because in Guardians, when they were all at the meeting, you know, or the wake of Thanos, so to speak, and then they, you know, were warped out, and I guess Silver Surfer Black's the one that helped them warp, or Silver Surfer, sorry, is the one that helped them warp back in. Spoiler alert for those that didn't read it, but definitely, I think I also have this other crazy Donnie 
Kate's speculation. And we all know Jason Aaron has come out and said, like, you know, War of the Realms is pretty much like his last hurrah on Thor, and he's going to be getting off of it. I would not be surprised to see, you know, have someone come in for a little bit, probably just a little break, and then Donny Cates take over Thor because he's taken over the entire cosmic, you know, universe for Marvel. So I would I would not be surprised. And he looks up to Jason Aaron, like, completely. You know, we all probably think Donny Cates is the best writer in comics right now, but he'll still tell you it's Jason Aaron. You know, and it, I, it, Well, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I, know, I agree with him. It's but, either Aaron or it's Hickman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. coming back. Or, or Peter J. Tomasi. He's pretty freaking great, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tomasi is dipping his toe into that Marvel pool, starting yeah. with the Marvel Comics 1000. I will say this. Uh, I am loving Al Ewing, though, in Immortal Hulk. I do think that is one of the best comics that is out right now. And if you're not reading that, I think you need to get on that. And you can spec on that book, too, because I, I think the biggest spec, when Red Hulk comes back, when General Ross comes back, People will be blowing their minds reading that. So if if you guys like Marvel Cosmic and you like Al Ewing, I would really suggest post Secret Wars check out Ultimates, Ultimates and yeah. Ultimates oh. Squared, where he basically yeah, puts back together the Marvel cosmology piece by piece while everybody else just kind of ignores what he's doing. But he's doing big boy things, man. Uh, Al Ewing does big boy things in that book. Really good stuff. Yeah, I, no, his ultimate run, his ultimates run was really good, man. I love that run. Actually, doesn't get enough credit or doesn't get talked about enough. Al Ewing's a man. I, yeah, I, that's the first time I've heard about that run. I might have to get Marvel Limited to actually check that out because that sounds really awesome. It's some good stuff, man, and oh. the, and the art is kind of all over the place. It's a team that you wouldn't think to like. You know, you got uh, Captain Marvel, Blue Marvel, uh, Black I Panther. Sure. Spectrum, America Chavez, Galactus, the Life Bringer. Like it's, it's just, <laughs> huh. it's so yeah. off the wall, man. But it's great. It's cool. No, I agree. It's like they, they yeah. The first arc is uh, they want to they want to defeat the real problems of the universe, and one of the real problems of the universe is Galactus keeps eating everything. So they <laughs> go, they find Galactus, and they basically reverse engineer his DNA. And they make him a life bringer. So he goes to dead planets. He's like a glowing uh, uh, white and gold Galactus who goes to planets that are dead and just seeds life. It's really a really fantastic different take on one of the, the biggest bads in the history of the Marvel Universe, man. It's really good stuff. Awesome. And then Civil War Two happens, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah. well, we got to make we got to make Carol Danvers be a cunt." So this book can't be good anymore. <laughs> All right, so it's been far too long since I've gone into the chat. Like I said, we still got Common Smith explaining the chat. They're just him and Caleb are talking about writers they like. They mentioned Hickman, Lemire. I think I saw Ed Brubaker, one of my yeah. favorite writers, mentioned he's been killing it on Criminal, which I, I'd like to get the hardcover at some point when that comes out. Uh, we still got uh, Blast Under Stash at Comic Show. He actually asked her, I'll ask real quick to you guys. Uh, what do you think about Walking Dead and uh, the death of Rick Grimes? I think so, it was a long time coming and, and felt underwhelming. Yeah. What about you, Chad? Not on Walking Dead, so I don't have ah. an, an opinion on it. It's not, and I'm not going to just bullshit. <laughs> but yeah, you know. So. Yeah. I, not my cup of tea. I don't know. what. I'm not a big zombie guy. Like zombies is not my thing. So gotcha. Yeah, I read pretty much like issues. I started collecting Walking Dead back in issue 30. And then pretty much when the Negan stuff hit with uh, issue 100, I was kind of done after that. I checked in periodically, like they'd have like, you know, a big event or something. I might buy like the issue 150 or the death of the Andre character, which is a phenomenal issue. So every time I kind of hear rumblings of something big, I might check out a couple issues and see what's going on. And yeah, I, I agree kind of with Drew. It just felt like, you know, Kirkman, it's been a while since he killed like a big character and he's just like, yeah, we got to do something that you can prove that anything can happen in the walking dead. You know, I figure I, I think everyone was like, Oh, he's getting killed off by 200. And maybe there's like, you know what? Now it was good enough, so let's just do it and then build up to 200. So, yeah. Oh, I also have uh, 
Comic Head 84. Kenny's in the chat. What's going on, man? And then I think I saw him. We got we've got Immortal Biggie Shack. He's clanging and banging run down Santa Monica. I think I told him I'd owe him something here. So uh, there we go. I just added a new moderator. So there we go. <laughs> We got JPL Flash Comics geeked him in the chat. What is going on? He has a great Tuesday live stream as well. Uh, so check out his channel. Uh, they have a great live stream over there as well. Let's see who else we got. Then we had uh, Bake the Snake. What is going on? So I guess it's time. I got a couple more books to show off. and then you. Got I got an okay yeah. from John's Comics with Kids. Really? Yeah. Nice. I mean, I can open it, I guess, here. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. While you open that, I'll go ahead and show my uh, in-stock trades haul I got today. Well, so, I know what some of these are. So I don't yeah. Wanna, well, I don't think he sent me anything extra. I hope he didn't. But nice. But I couldn't find those die issues. So oh, really? I guess, yeah. And he goes, yo, I'm stocked up on them. Don't worry. I got you. It was just funny because, like, I, you know, we were messing each other back and forth earlier. And he goes, it only took, like – six months and i just laughed i'm like no don't worry man i was in no rush so, i get caught up by the time the next issue comes up i got a feeling you get packed more in here though but here's what i'll be reading the next few weeks i finally got a copy of this mr miracle hardcover that they've been hyping up for an eternity and then it sold out like the first day on in stock trades so i'm happy to finally be able to read this because they decided not to put it on the uh, dc streaming app because people wanted to read it so they didn't put it on there same thing. You didn't, with you didn't buy the singles? No, I passed. I was just waited. I missed out on the first issue. So I'm like, ah, it's getting hardcover. So I have not read this thing. Uh, issues 1 to 12 yet. So I, that's the first thing I'm going to read out of this haul. Uh, I'm about to do Saga hardcover 2. So luckily hardcover 3 just came out. So uh, I'm really looking forward. This thing has been awesome. Uh, it has lived up to the hype for me. So uh, this should be the last. If I can get through this, uh, by the time the uh, – the series comes back, I should be able to get the single issues after that because this finishes up everything that's out so far. And then the last book, just because I got uh, free shipping, basically, I threw in Wicked and the Divine Volume 3, another awesome series. I need to finish up the second hardcover still. Uh, but if you guys hadn't checked this out from Karen Gillen and Jamie McKelvey, it's a beautiful book and, a, and actually a crazy, phenomenal story, too. So I can't say enough good things about Wicked and Divine. It doesn't get enough love in the community. That's for sure. If uh, if you're iffy about it, you can normally find like online clearance of the first trade. I found mine for like three bucks. Which read? Wicked Divine. Oh, Wicked, Wicked, Wicked and Divine volume, volume one trade. I just found. So, uh, and, I think I and it really it sucks you in. But I found an uh, issue one for a dollar a couple weeks ago too. So they're still out there. I mean, they're not pricey books. They're just not too many of them. <laughs> Oh, there he is. Chad's back. What you got, Chad? Yeah. All right. So there were some books that I couldn't find. John was able to find. They're all here. I love John. He is the man. We got gifts from the king. And the first one we have is Little Bird, Chapter 1. Everyone has been loving themselves from Little Bird. It's all indie books, and I, I definitely need to up my indie game even more. So I'm super stoked to add these to the collection. And then we also have chapter two. I didn't I didn't know he was gonna give me one and two. So that's awesome. Nice. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Those covers are cool. And then now I have the a complete set of die which I was missing issues two and three. So I gotta get the tape off this over here. But shout out to John. Thank you. Now I can read Die fully through because it did not have this. So appreciate you, John, and the girls, because I'm sure they helped them one way or another. To either go get the books or package it. All right, I'll just assume. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's one of those series. It, it got better with each issue as well. So it's definitely one of my trade favorite waiting on it. I feel like a, I feel like a dummy for passing up oh, issue number man. one. Yeah, the, gr the girl who used to run my LCS. She uh. She's like, you should read this. <laughs> I flipped through it and I was like, nah. Yeah, I got to meet uh, Stephanie Hans at C2E2, and she was amazing too. But yeah, I'm glad to see her succeed, and I'm glad that you know Image has given her that book so her interior stuff can shine as well because she's mainly known for her covers. I feel like, but man, she's been killing yeah, it. Definitely. 
I wonder how many books John has sorted because he's got them like all labeled. Chad, 90, oh, wow. you know? <laughs> wow, John. Be on the lookout, other people in the community. AOKs are coming your way. Look, guys, if you write uh, Drew Manchu in the back of your books, they magically find a way to me. I won't be mad at you. <laughs> awesome. Just making an exercise, right? Drew Manchu in the back of a couple of your books, and we'll see where they end up. That is too funny. So uh, I also got some eBay hauls, which I think I'm going to save a couple books now that uh, I'm apparently going to be on the hunt soon. I got to hold back, I guess, and then unload on those jerks. So uh, I got a bunch of stuff. Basically, I got two ish or two lots of uh, Bronze Age Marvel. Marvel. So it was like twenty books for twenty bucks, basically. And I guess some of the highlights of those uh, dollar books, basically, I got, I got another copy of this Doctor Strange number four. Uh, one of the most underrated, phenomenal covers I've seen ever. I think it's this awesome. Looks like it's a pretty damn good shape too. Yeah, it's in a nice shape, and I showed this off. I think I can't remember. I think I was showing uh, the Mastodon comics and collecting in a hangout. But not only is it a phenomenal cover, I mean, you got to open this book up because it's all Frank Bruner. The opening panel is freaking Doctor Strange with a skeleton in the background uh, fighting a skeleton with a Pegasus. So. I mean that what you're going to be sold on that no matter what. So that'll put the butts in the book. seats. Yeah, so highly recommend this book. Just issue four by itself. So I saw that in that lot. I'm like, well, I don't mind another issue of this. This is a great run. Don't be showing everything off. Your boy JD Flair's in the chat now. Woo! Yeah, I know he loves him some Doctor Strange. So yeah, one of my favorites. And then I got some uh, Spideys, some lower number ones. So I got. Amazing Spider-Man 127. So I had to put that in that nice, shiny Mylar bag. There's your glare for you. So couldn't pass this up for a buck. Got a Amazing 137 as well in that lot. And 171, Nova on the cover. And that's it. Was this one that Dick Ryder that everybody likes? Yeah. Yeah. New stand, I guess. There you go. And then... Uh, Put this Hulk 167 in a Mylar bag, too. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. Yeah. Dog. yeah. I thought that was real nice, too. Don't be showing off all your heat. Oh, this isn't the... This is just the, the regular oh. stuff. I, th this isn't the heat at all. So, yeah, I, I, got, I got a couple books I, I put, put to the side once I, uh, you know, got the news on that chat. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, I got some uh, Perez Wonder Woman. So I got issue 49 for a buck. Just a beautiful cover. Drew, I know you're not the biggest fan, but I got to show it off at least once. Yeah, poor account. man's Ron Lim. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, we'll go with the Bolin stuff, though, because I'm trying to collect all these uh, Brian Bolin Wonder Woman covers. So there's a cool one on issue 66 of her coming out of an astronaut suit. So uh, that was a really awesome cover. She's taking off her clothes for feminism. <laughs> we got issue 79. And then uh, issue number 84. So slowly collecting all these. I think I got a couple more in this stack, actually, that I had sort of maybe. Maybe I put them over here. Like I said, I, I still collect these books <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> They're everywhere here. Uh, right. I had more Wonder Woman, but I don't I got a question for you. Is yeah. Big your only moderator? Uh, there's a couple others. But no, because I think that would be great. If Biggie Shack was your only moderator, because yeah. I mean, that anything flies in the chat, yo, when Biggie Shack's here. Yeah, I, I saw he, I gave him the blue wrench, and within five minutes, he had to do that big boot and a leg drop to somebody. So, <laughs> big shout out to the immortal Biggie Shack. He's just hulking up in the chat. I guess while we're in the chat, let's go over it one more time. We got Highly Comic Bro just hopped in the chat. What's going on, man? We got Aggressively Relaxing. Uh, it looks like he just crossed 200 subs. So, big congratulations on that, man. That's awesome. And we got. Woo! JD Comics, what is going on? He missed all the trash talk we did about him at the beginning of the show, so hopefully he'll watch it on the rewind. Look, old man Flair wouldn't have known what I was talking about. I was using children's lingo of today. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, liking the covers 4963. He's always in this chat. Uh, I always Yeet. appreciate it, man. What's going on? And uh, yeah, Bit Comics was explained says he dropped that big leg, so absolutely love it. So uh, I had a funny eBay experience when I got all these lots. 
So uh, a person, they sent me the wrong Batman lot. It was supposed to be like uh, some of the ones in the 620s, 630s. I think uh, like Marv Wolfman, Peter Milligan worked on those. Uh, but for some reason, they sent me like, detect like Detective Comics from this area. So I had uh, 598 through like 608 or something, which I didn't order that. But the lot I did order came with 598 and 599. So that's why I have like two copies of these books now because they sent me the wrong one. So they just offered to sell me the one they sent me for like a couple bucks. So it was like less than 50 cents an issue. I'm like, sure, why not? But yeah, well. I got basically all these Batmans for a dollar or less. So I got those. I got 606. Then they actually sent me the right lot. Is that so the I, Mud Pack? Yeah, the Mud Pack Part 3 or 4 on this one. That's a pretty good arc. Yeah. It's an enjoyable read. I need to read uh, it more. I mean, it's it's not it's girl. not worth the paper it's printed on, but it's <laughs> it's an enjoyable read. Yeah, I got issue six thirty one, number six thirty six, six forty. Like I say, you, I think you guys are kind of gonna see what I was going. There's mainly one book I was going after in this stack, and they finally sent it to me. They sent me two copies of this detective six forty two. So there's that one. So I'll probably end up just selling the other one for like a buck somewhere down the line. Six forty-six. The main reason, maybe I should save this one for that hunt show, but yeah, we'll just throw it now. Why not? Got six forty-seven for like less than a buck, basically. So that's like the first Stephanie Brown, if I remember correctly. So definitely needed that. I know this is on the wall of my local shop for much more than a dollar, obviously. So uh, I need to rebag and board that. I oh, got what, eight or twelve on it somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, something like that. Pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's a double. It's not too crazy, uh, but it, it's it's a double digit book at least. It's one of those key key issues that you see everywhere. Correct. Yeah, pretty much. You got six fifty two. It's still in dollar bins, basically. It's it's a good one to go out there and dig for. So we got some Nightfall action. Who's loving some Nightfall? Six sixty three as well. Yeah, that's that'd be a fun one. Just rats on your oh, cow. I love that. Yeah, cover. that's a crazy cover. I think that's uh, uh, Kelly Jones did that cover. So great 90s stuff right there. Then uh, Lee Weeks did some 680. So another cool cover there. And then my last pickups, because I'll, I'll save that rest for another video, because there's a whole – I need to rebag and board every one of those. I had – I actually took a trip on my vacation, went to Half Price Books, went to a couple antique shops, and I got, uh, like I said, I'm collecting a lot of bowling stuff, got Gotham Knights issue number 37, really cool cover on that one right there, got it for a buck in a clearance bin, so, oh, new stand, there you go, had to get this, Legend recommended I get this book, I sold my copy way back when, so I found another one for a dollar, uh, The Trial of Reed Richards in Fantastic Four 262. It actually starts off with John Byrne uh, writing himself into Marvel continuity to help the Fantastic Four. So I thought that was really fun. So really cool issue. Always like that cover as well. Couldn't leave this Flash 50 and uh, Half Price Books been for a buck fifty. So uh, pretty awesome cover right there. And it's if I remember, right, I think I read the. I need to read the whole Flash War. I think that's the Flash War if I remember right. I plan on reading this whole run at some point. Uh, but I know people are liking this run that was around issue 50. I found this You one. know, Wally dies after that and then comes back and kills himself. And yeah, there's I, a whole big jerk off. I'm with you reminded me. So, yeah, man. And then he goes into the Heroes in Christ. Oh, man. <gasps> was it the, uh, the there's a new Harley and Ivy book that comes out tomorrow? And my guy was trying to sell me on it today and he showed me the cover and it says, From the Pages of Heroes in Crisis. And I was like, Nope. Nope, not going to do it. Terrible. Well, we'll see if uh, Mr. Miracle gets me back, you know, in the good graces of Tom King. But right now, it, it, Mr. Miracle's Virgins, Heroes in Crisis, I'm sorry, but I just, I'm not a big Tom King fan. But uh, Mr. Miracle, we'll see. I've heard great things. But uh, I guess I'll keep going with it. I got this for four bucks. I already got a copy of it. So couldn't leave this land. Green Lantern number 20. The, basically, the finale of the, the Jeff Johns run of Green Lantern, which lasted. You know, basically, what a decade, if I remember right. Uh, plus, it's you know, I think uh, Poor Man's Comics calls it the best hand job in comics. So, first cameo appearance of Jessica Cruz, 
happens in this book, and it's the the black and white variant. So, really cool book to own. I had some more Howard the Duck. I forgot to bring it out for the video, but I didn't get a Howard the Duck one this month for like ten bucks. But I found these awesome. for a, a dollar fifty as well. So I got an issue five. And then I absolutely, lo I've always loved this cover for issue eight, so I could leave that in that bin either. This might be a second copy for me <laughs> as well, but I just always love that cover of him exploding out of that newspaper all angry and everything. So love me some Howard the Duck when I can get those cheap. Here you go, Chad. I got a uh, TMNT issue 73 for two bucks. Hell yeah. Pile of Krang part one. So I'll definitely be putting that on my little read pile here with my hardcovers because I had not had a chance to read that yet. That's a yeah. great book. Yeah, here's my uh, newsstand of the day. I found a Wetworks number one for a dollar fifty. So shout out to Will Spartasio. Doesn't get enough love in terms of uh, image founders. So found a Wetworks number one. I was happy to finally get a newsstand of that. So I thought that was really cool. And uh, I guess the final books I'll show tonight as we're approaching that one hour mark. Uh, a while back, I sold uh, a lot of my Moon Knight collection to Mastodon Comics and Collecting. And there was like one cover in particular Bill Sienkiewicz did. I was like, why did I sell that? I should have just put it on my wall. So I ended up getting a cheap lot of Moon Knight where I paid, I think, maybe two bucks a piece for these on an eBay auction. I just threw one of those offers out there and the guy actually accepted it because I'm a cheapskate and that's what I do when I see best offer. <laughs> so I found a Moon Knight 24 was in that lot. Like I said, if you love Sienkiewicz, you definitely need to get these Moon Knights. Uh, there's 23. Actually, actually, a really cool cover as well. Number 27. I need to rebag all these. 26. They're kind of in those bags where you need to wash your hands right after handling them. <laughs> Sticky bags. But the books are in really good shape. So these are kind of an upgrade for what I have. Yeah, better to sticky on the bag than on the books. <laughs> yes. Issue 30, which I do like that uh, Werewolf by Night cover. And then the main one I wanted, I mylared it up. It's probably going on my wall at some point somewhere in this house. But uh, number 29. Uh, I've absolutely loved this cover. I think it's one of Sinkevich's best. Actually, you know what? I think he's supposed to be at Baltimore, right, Drew? I'm not 100% sure about that. Yeah, I thought it's news to me. He may have been announced for Baltimore, I think. So I think I'm going to take this one. I'd to like to meet time. him. Yes. So we'll go and meet him for sure. And hopefully he won't give us patient zero type sickness symptoms like other creators did at C2E2. So uh, here's like my that, that poor man's Ron, Ron Lim impersonator. I can't <laughs> sick. I said it looks like a pretty clean copy too for that. Yes. Yeah, there's a couple. Uh, there's like a small crease up top, a couple ticks on the side, but this is actually a pretty big upgrade for what I had originally. But yeah, with this uh, solid black cover, I mean, absolutely, it's it's a clean copy. So very happy with that one. So Sweet. that'll be highlighted my collection at some point so uh, let's go over the chat one more time we'll do some final plugs and sign off of here but we got jd comics still in the chat Woo! he says bill as in sinkevich is pretty cool we still got liking the covers of 4963 tmc comics still in there comics miss explain says drew you better be at baltimore i know you're here it's, it's still up in the air oh, i was man. supposed to know by yesterday and i don't know yet well, if not, we'll it is what it is, but we hope to see you there. We still got Baked the Snake. Oh, looks like the Great Legend has joined us. What's going on, Great Legend? Definitely, you know, one of my favorite guys to talk to in the whole community, to say the least. So glad you can make it at the tail end of the stream here. Uh, we got comics. Mrs. Plain says Poison Ivy is turning into a good guy, and they were hinting at her becoming a new avatar for the green, and then the king turned her back into a villain and brought her to a weird, all weird looking. So Tom King, everybody. Thank you, Comics Miss Explained. Uh, we had Alfred83 Comics join us. What's going on, man? I haven't seen him for a minute, so always happy to see Alfred83 Comics. He has some great videos on his channel as well. And uh, Thomas Wayne was still in the chat. He says, nice stack. So thank you for that. And then uh, Blaster Stash says, I think we need to go to Emerald City next spring. That'd be a fun one to go to as well. I'm always kind of locked in for C2E2 just because I live four hours from the convention, but I would love to try to make Emerald City at some point because they have, that's a phenomenal. Oh, we got a uh, old poor man's comics hopped in at the end as well. So what's going on, PMC? Uh, I guess anything else you guys want to talk about, show off, belts you want to hold up, anything you want to drink in, man? Chad, what's going on in your channel? You already know YouTube is 90 
and drink it in, man. Because we got everything going on, 90 MF Comics. Tomorrow night, you can find me on my channel as we talk everything from comics. We review them. We spec on them. We show, show you everything we picked up for new comic book day. So check me out then. Check me and see what it out this Thursday review and a half show there as well. And of course, every Monday night on MCE, that geek show. But most importantly, next week on the hunt, you can find me defend my cover championship against the tone and the tone you stupid idiot i hear you talking here you want to come after my cover championship but you best believe i'm the best at the world at what i do and you're not ready for what's coming your way because i already have it on its way and i'm keeping my cover championship and we all know i'm a conspiracy victim because i should still be hunt champion and once i get back on the hunt and get my hunt championship I'll be undisputed YouTube champion once again. So you best believe you can check me out next week on the hunt. But unfortunately, it's only for the covered championship. I won't be thrown down for the hustle of the week. So I'll see you there, C. Wood. All right. Hey, you need a Ralphus. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I love it, man. What about you, Drew? Well, what are your final well, thoughts? Man, I took a moment when I first got here to do a little shooting from the hip at those old jabronis on the hunt and that, that little kid smurf bandito whatever the whatever the hell he's doing but i every time i hear this I, you know what you seem like a good guy chad you seem like a real good guy and i don't want to hurt your feelings but every time i hear that youtube is 90 i think you're on some steiner math shit this uh, youtube is not 90 it's like 3.14 youtube is pie you, I, I, it just doesn't make any sense and then you guys are scared the hunt's scared now you know what I, i'm not going to be on the hunt this week so i can go ahead and show this off hunt scared because i find spawn 181s in dollar bins baby I, I find these in dollar bins this is a beautiful beautiful copy here look at that if you to cover spawn 181 dollar bin y'all can't hang you can't hang i'm coming for your lunch thanks for having me see what yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, I, I all I know is like you know, there's this big wrestling oriented chat where we talk about comic books and wrestling, and they didn't even bother to invite Drew until he says like, "Hey guys, where's Drew?" <laughs> and then finally, the the bandito puts you in, uh, Caleb Murphy. So uh, I got love for that kid, man. Yeah. He, he runs his mouth a lot, but I got love yeah. for that kid. Oh man, he killed it on the hunt last Friday too. <laughs> he would he wouldn't stop talking. It was amazing. So. Like it says, the hardest I've laughed for a long time. Fifty cents. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I've seen that in dollar bins too. Oh man, that's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. That yeah. that run is only good for its covers. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there was a no. Yeah, you're right for the most part. They had some great covers though. But yeah, we're getting ready to sign off here. But all I know is, you know, I, I want to thank the fans out there. You know, the 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 the, the tone and his pal McSand. And the heartbreak kid and the old man flair, they don't want none is what it is. They've been ignoring me. They've been, you know, ducking me. Every time people are like, man, why don't you get that C-Dub Punk on that show? I'm like, oh, he's the YouTube champion. I don't know if he could be the YouTube champion and be in our tournament on Slapdown. It's my Johnny Ace impression, by the way. So, uh, you know, the booker over there. It's like, oh, uh, he's a let, let, let's see what he's he's a dynamic dude. <laughs> we're gonna give him this title, and then we're gonna put the championship on the, the underwhaler. So a bunch of paper champions over there, the ham and eggers, as I call them. They, they don't they, they bring these like I don't even know where they get these books from, and they 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 overpay for them, and they think they're so yeah, cool. man, a, a conspiracy exactly. Yeah, I wasn't revealed how much was paid for the book that was I was beaten with. Like, get out of here, get out. All of I here. know is when when I come on that hunt, I, the first time I'm gonna check my watch, and all I know is it's newsstand time, and then boom, I'm gonna hit them with some newsstands. So I already got one book. I just got approved during this live stream. I got I, I don't buy slabs. I've got a slab coming. That's coming hot. So all I know is you know, I got only got one question for those hunt jerks. Do I have everybody's attention now? 
So thanks for joining us, guys. It's been a lot of fun. So can't wait for that. We got Comic Core coming up uh, every day this week, basically. So I think they're doing Golden Guys tonight, 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern time for all those shows. So Golden Guys should be tonight. Uh, Wednesday will be Comic Core Unlimited, uh, the B show of the Comic Core. So we'll see what they come up with this week. Uh, they were nice enough to have me, Drew, and Legend on all last week. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, Thursday, we'll be going outside the issues. Uh, so we'll be talking about Swamp Thing, Episode 4 with Cat Run Figures and Chad. And while I'm talking about Cat, i got to have it spend a special shout-out uh, to Mark BKR and Cat for having me on their Saturday live stream, which was uh, Mary Kill Colossus. And I just heard Mark's eyes rolls from here because we're both <laughs> Indiana Hoosiers here. So uh, I know Mark loves him some Colossus over there. But big thanks to Cat and Mark uh, for hosting me on their channel. It was a lot of fun that Saturday night. And then Friday, huge episode of Comic Core coming up. You never know what's going to happen on the Comic Core Friday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. So definitely, uh, you, this is a, it's going to be a can't miss episode of Comic Core. That's all I will say about that. So big thanks to Drew Manchu, Chad from 90 MF Comics, uh, and the chat, of course. So until next time, that guy stink. He won't get out of the rafters, guys. The guy stink. He's always in the rafters, and we're out of time, of course. Every time he gets in there, the tape machines are rolling.